That was How Great Thou Art on your Celebration Radio Network. My name is Bill. The phone number 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313 to get in a favorite uh, prayer request or to talk to Pastor Ryan, John, Terry, and I. They are in the studio with me. Good morning, gang. Hey, good, good morning. morning. And uh, it is great to have you guys uh, back on a regular schedule. I know, right? Oh, yeah, I hope. Good. For a little while. We're off for yeah. a month and a half there. Yeah, that's true. For a <laughs> yeah. little while. A little yeah. while. So yeah. we got some headlines in the news that I wanted to go over, and uh, I gave Ryan a, a, a sheet of his own mm-hmm. um, because that is definitely his topic, yeah, um, my the Middle house. East kind of thing. Uh, and oh, yeah. uh, uh, Senator Lin- Lindsey Graham had a statement as well as Benjamin Netanyahu. And uh, why don't you, um, let's start with that, Pastor Ryan, when you get a chance, why don't you okay. read that for us and find uh, out yeah. what they're saying. Sh- should I just go ahead and read the, the Yes, read yeah, the whole thing. Short, short yep. blurb here. So, yep. Okay, so this is uh, the latest from the Israel Front. Um, it says Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with, home front, uh, met with his home front command Thursday following the threat by Iran's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei to strike Israel directly. Uh, Israel's military and civilians are preparing for an attack by Iran and its proxies. It's no doubt going to happen on multiple fronts, possibly at the same time in the wake of the killing of Hamas leader Ismail Hania. I've actually been to that guy's house, not in his house, but drove by it and looked at it Mm. in Gaza city years ago in Iran this week and the elimination of Hezbollah's second in command, Faoud Shukur. Now I see why you had me read this. Yep. Because the names. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm like butchering their names here. Uh, in Beirut, which is the capital of Lebanon, the United States plans to back Israel militarily. And Senator Lindsey Graham says it's time to end the charade that the world is playing when it comes to Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. He added they're one and the same. And of mm-hmm. course they are. I mean, obviously. So yes. even October 7th, I mean. Uh, yeah, there was. It wasn't even a matter of like you know there was evidence. But I mean, nobody denied it. Hamas um, fighters, hundreds of them, I think four hundred of them, just months earlier had been in in Iran, training for that that attack, the October seventh attack. And Iran for years has been supplying the weapons and the training and the funds to Hamas in Gaza. So when when Hamas started out, like in nineteen eighty eight, is when they when they began, um, they actually were not connected at all all to Iran. But over time, I mean, they, they needed help. They needed backing. Yeah, and they Iran became a proxy. Help. Yeah, 100%. And, and the, the big distinction there is that Hamas is uh, actually Sunni Muslim, whereas Iran is, is Shia Muslim. So there's always that kind of like, mm. uh, you know, tension there. Yeah. But um, this was huge. It, so you, you guys have been following the news over the last week mm-hmm. about what happened. So, that, so last Saturday, uh, up in the Golan Heights, uh, in a little village very, yeah. very close to Mount Hermon, right up in the where you know, Lebanon, Syria. Playing soccer. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't even uh, Israeli Jews. It was Israeli citizens, but they were yeah. Druze, D-R-U-Z-E, if you want to mm. look that up, which is kind of a, a, a esoteric little religious group. Um, they really keep to themselves. Uh, Naif and I, when I was in Lebanon a couple of years ago, we actually met a group of them up in the Cedar Forest and had mm. a really nice talk with them, super nice people. But yeah, 12 little kids, you know, uh, in the age range of like maybe 8 to 12, it looked mm-hmm. like. Um, we're playing soccer and, and, uh, Hezbollah fired a missile at an IDF base nearby. Um, they're not great with their aim, of nope, course, they right? They missed completely. Indiscriminate. Yeah. And hit this yeah. soccer field. And, and, uh, so in response on, um, Tuesday, just, you know, a couple of days later, mm-hmm. um, Israel, uh, hit a target in Southern Beirut. So that's all, you know, uh, Hezbollah territory, right? Yeah. And um, took out a building there, uh, killed the commander, this guy, Faoud yeah. Shukur, however you pronounce his name. His bodyguard and, mm-hmm. and uh, some others, too. There, there, were, there were a couple of uh, civilians, including a couple of children, that were in the building that got killed. Um, it's Hezbollah's fault. I mean, mm-hmm. these, this, is, this is, you know, casualties of war, right? Um, but, but they got the guy, and, the, and he was the guy who not only had planned that, but did you guys happen to catch in the news what else this guy had planned? I'm trying to a remember long time what ago. it was. Yeah, it was a huge issue. So yeah, I can't remember what it was though. So it was he was actually the one who had planned the 1983 bombing of the marine base oh, in Beirut. Okay. okay. Yeah. So so decades ago and and killed like 240 something marines. Mm-hmm. Um so this guy's been on America's most wanted list uh, mm-hmm. like a 5 million dollar reward for him for for decades, you know, mm-hmm, since 1983. Right. 
but of course the u s the current u s administration um didn't bring up that point. they just mm, brought up right. a couple of kids that got killed it's like this this guy was on yeah. the most wanted list you know for anyways, yeah, don't get me started yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh so that was on Tuesday, and then just a few hours later on Wednesday. So Ismail Khania, he's, he's, again, he was the, for decades, the head of Hamas in, in Gaza, not living there, of course, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's not a great life there. So he's been living in Qatar. You guys have been oh, there yeah. recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty opulent town in, 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 you know, little tiny country, you know, on the Arabian Peninsula by Saudi mm-hmm. Arabia. Very, very rich, right? But he's been just living high in the hog, a net worth of a couple billion dollars. Where's that money coming from? Mm-hmm. The UN, the US, of course, right? Yeah. This, the, in this guy's personal bank account. But the the day that October 7th happened, I think the second I saw it on the news, that was my first thought is that this guy, his days are numbered. I mean, he's been around for decades. He's gone. Mm. I'm surprised it took Israel this long, but but I, I, I kind of, this this sounds awful, but, you know, mm. bear with me here, right? I, I love the way they got him, where they got him, and under what circumstances. So he was actually in Tehran, the capital of Iran, mm-hmm. for the inauguration ceremony of their new president, and I can't think of his name, and I would butcher it anyways, right? But um, but but right after the, the the swearing in ceremony, he goes back to his guest house, and then boom. So some accounts say that it was a missile that was fired from outside Iran. Doesn't seem likely at all. Okay, I mean, how, how's it how's it that targeted of an attack? Uh, the latest story is that there was a bomb that had been planted in this guest house. Uh, maybe a couple months ago hmm. and Israel w- was just waiting for, you know, the moment to, to press the button. So, wow. but whatever happened, I mean, Israel, it's been like this ever since uh, world war two when they, mm-hmm. you know, when they established themselves as a nation, 1948 mm-hmm. and start going after Nazis around the world. Mm-hmm. And this is what Israel does. You come against them and, and they're going to go right for, you know, the head of the snake. Right. right. Yeah. So, um, so what's going to happen. So that was just Wednesday, a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. So, so that's two extremely high profile assassinations of Iran, two of Iran's best friends, you know, all within the course of, you know, less mm-hmm. than 24 hours. So Iran literally, right, in terms mm-hmm. of international relations, has no choice but to respond. Mm-hmm. They have no choice. They have to. So this is tricky for Iran because you remember a month or so ago, they, they tried this. They fired yeah. 300 missiles at Israel. Right. I mean, we're talking about ICBMs. Like two, yeah, two made it or something. I mean, one, one, one made it yeah. and and hit the ground and and um, you know injured a, a, a Bedouin girl, little Bedouin girl, like twelve years old, and I think she recovered. I, I didn't hear yeah. that she she uh. even pass away. So, so it was the the most spectacular failure of any military attack in human history. It mm. was so embarrassing for Iran. Of course, they claim victory, huh? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But so the big question now is, you know, now what are they going to do? They can't take a chance of another full-scale missile attack and, and you know, more embarrassment. Uh, so who knows? But, the, yeah. but there's going to be something. So mm-hmm. just keep watching the news, and, mm-hmm. and things are heating up like we've never seen mm-hmm. ever in history. Right. And uh, I don't know. Do Maybe it's like the end times or something. Could, something I, like that. Or maybe, yeah. you know, just start, starting to think after, oh, um, after all this. Yeah. I'm kind of leaning that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and, and keep in mind that biblical prophecy specifically says that the, bel- the two main belligerents mm-hmm. in this great end times war that will culminate in, the, in what we call the Battle of Armageddon mm-hmm. is Israel and Iran. Right. And the United States is all, also depicted throughout the whole story, not by name, of course, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, clearly, the, the U.S. is throughout that the, the whole end time story supporting Israel, fighting against the Antichrist, who's backed by Iran, mm-hmm. uh, who's backed by Russia. This mm-hmm. is this is. A, I'm not talking about the the news today. I'm talking about Bible prophecy thousands yeah. of right. years ago. So so are we in the end times? I mean, is this stuff coming to pass? Come on, yeah. You know, can't make this stuff up. So. No, not at all. Yeah. Okay. So there Gosh. was. Okay. So I did my piece. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. And we'll was, get to the fun. good news and uh, what's <laughs> yeah, been no. happening in the that. Olympics. And no. I want to talk about uh, something that happened there with a couple of uh, Olympians, and also what happened in California just a few days ago with right. Pastor Greg Glory and his gang at Pirates Cove. So mm-hmm. we'll talk all about that coming up here in a little bit. Um, the phone number again, 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. John Reddick up next with Don't Fight Alone on your Celebration Radio Network. Good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Hey, good morning, Bill. Good, good morning, Ike. Ike. Hey, yeah, hey, good, good, good memory, good voice <laughs> recognition, whatever. Put you in a contest with Miss Debbie there. Uh-huh. Hey, um, man, uh... God still answered my prayer from two days ago. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I Good. had a concern of a health concern. Yes, I know. Head. We prayed you know, for it. Yeah, you pray, and and then uh, why is it that after fifty years of walking with Jesus, when He moves mightily and and all that, I'm surprised and like, wait, why isn't the issue still there? And so trying to mm. pull it back in, I go, you know, wait, I called into the station, and people <laughs> stretched out their hand towards the radio. Anyway, uh, praise God, my prayer was answered from the other day, and it was me and Rick were the two prayer requests. Right. And, uh, I don't, know how, I don't know how Rick's doing, but uh, man, yeah, God, still need, moving. still needs prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay, I remember Rick and uh, Ryan, and I don't know if there's a third guy there in your studio, but yeah, uh, John and Terry are here as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah, and I appreciate him bringing up the fact that that uh, uh, Beirut bombing was such a tragedy and stuff, and to know mm-hmm. that uh, in sense that justice was uh, mm-hmm. was uh, done. Uh, that's I'm sure there's a lot of grieving parents and stuff that, you know, have a sense of closure and stuff to a degree, you know, on that. So anyway, enjoy your guys' show this morning. Bless you, and uh, have a great Friday and wonderful weekend and Sabbath day and Sunday. Yeah, you as well, Thank brother. You. Thank you. God bless. Okay, bye, okay. guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, looking for you. That's Zach Williams and Dolly Parton on your Celebration Radio Network at 18 minutes to the top of the hour. My name is Bill, and in the studio with me is Pastor Ryan, John, and Terry. And uh, good morning again, gang. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Happy and uh, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah. Always enjoy this. privilege. Yeah, it's Always really a good is. time. It is. So there's been a couple of articles in the news about the olympics mm-hmm. and uh one of them when it was the opening ceremony oh yeah <laughs> that we have all had the unfortunate uh um yeah opportunity mm. to see you could yeah. say <laughs> uh, yeah uh, like, and, you, and you can't unsee it no you can't so, no nope. and once, once uh, it's in your brain <laughs> um i haven't been keeping up really with the olympics i don't really watch the olympics um unless it's the winter olympics because mm-hmm. i love hockey that's and about stuff, the only ones so. i watch is winter yeah and uh so but the uh some of the uh, people that have been participating in mm-hmm. the olympics um some u.s athletes point mm-hmm. to christ yeah. as the strength behind their success and awesome. he's glorified in that is uh one of the mm-hmm. teammates uh, in the American uh, Olympics, the mm-hmm. bronze medal winner, gymnast, yeah. um, ending a 16-year drought wow. in Paris. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Gymnast Brody Malone, mm-hmm. uh, the big moment included a personal comeback from him, and uh, he delivered a strong performance in every competition on Monday, recovering from a disastrous opening mm-hmm. night where he had several falls. Right. Um, so that is really cool. But yeah. uh, his Christian faith was on display. Yeah. And uh, so is uh, someone else's. Um, and uh, it's a female yeah. uh, athlete in the Olympics. And uh, do you have that? Yeah, it's Andy, Anna. Terry? Oh. I was, because she's female, I wanted mm-hmm. her to you know, <laughs> talk a little bit about yeah, Anna. I just pulled up a different article for oh, well, Anna a Hall different. or Brody? No, neither. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Somebody else? Yeah, this is um, from Sky Grimes. She's a uh, oh, yeah, she's representing a yeah. youth with a mission. They're oh, a, yes. Yeah, I remember Sky. Yes. Yeah. They're, yeah. Uh, she's actually from, from Havasu, Havasu, which is where yeah. we're yeah. broadcasting from. Very yeah. nice young lady. She's like 18, mm-hmm. 19, 20, maybe. She's from Calvary, isn't she? Yes. Uh-huh. She's maybe 20 years old. I don't. Yeah. yeah. So she's really young. She's uh, with you- Youth with a Mission. And they're out in Paris right now, oh. discipling and witnessing to people. And as of, uh, this is a post she put up yesterday. Mm-hmm. She says, we're halfway through our Olympic outreach. So here's the total stats so far. 2,281 people heard the gospel. Wow. 176 mm. people gave their lives to Jesus. Mm. 58 people got healed. Mm. 1,697 people were prayed for. Mm. 1,051 Bibles or tracts were distributed. Mm. 1,672 heard a testimony of someone's life. Mm. 1,009 people received acts of compassion, and 107 people got connected to a local church. Wow. 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 Cool. 
Now, there was a huge rally of 25,000 people that had taken place Mm -hmm. um, after that opening ceremony, kind of like in protest. Mm -hmm. But yet they were sharing, you know, they were were, sharing the good news and and, uh, there was some evangelists out there and Mm -hmm. music and and uh, just an incredible sight when you got the Eiffel Tower in the back, I know, right. you know, yeah. the background, and you've got yeah. thousands of people in front of it and mm-hmm. gathering in the name of Jesus, Amen. which is really yep. cool. And uh, this other article that we have, um, so keep praying for the athletes yeah. um, in the Olympics, and mm-hmm. uh, they're sharing their faith. I know that uh, a lot of the news networks cut them off and, and uh, don't even show mm. the full you know, words that they are sharing, Mm -hmm. uh, especially when they bring up how God is important to them and and Jesus. And, but uh, another event happened here in the United States and we've been seeing these for the last few months Mm -hmm. um, in Florida and in California. Now we have another 2000 people Mm -hmm. baptized in uh, a new Jesus revolution event at Pirates Cove Mm -hmm. and uh, pastor Greg glory of harvest Christian fellowship in California celebrating this, Another massive baptism turnout at Pirates mm-hmm. Cove. Uh, it's the largest sign that the, or the latest sign rather, of the nationwide move of God that kicked mm-hmm. into high gear with the um, Asbury Awakening of last right. year. Um, it isn't over yet, no. guys. Yeah. Now, uh, the book of Joel tells us that God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh mm-hmm. yeah, in, in, the the, in the last, in the last days. days. So yeah. Yeah. Um, they got a, a glimpse of it in the book of Acts in chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we are seeing the continuation of the book of Acts. Right. Um, it's the only yeah. book that doesn't actually, you know, say amen at the end. Exactly. Yeah, you know, kind of yeah. like there's Still no going. ending <laughs> Not yeah. because yeah. the no. church is continuing. So exactly. it's continuing to unfold. And uh, we are um, just beginning to mm-hmm. see um, 3,500 people said wow. the sinner's prayer at this wow. thing as well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. there's there's just, um, yeah, <laughs> it's it. incredible. It, it is really incredible. is. Yeah. Pastor Greg Laurie and, and his group there um, mm-hmm. at Harvest Church is not the only church that's been doing this. There's been churches right. in Florida and uh, Texas and, and other places that are having mass baptism. They're mm-hmm. doing it in fountains yeah. and when yeah. there's no lake or river or ocean, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. you know, to baptize people in. That's so, it. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Well, just need Where a body of water. water. That's, yeah. 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 Just water. That's like it always reminds me of the story Horse of the trough, eunuch. Remember the, remember the eunuch? And yeah. Just, well, there's some water right there. Okay. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> wow. So very cool. And uh, it is just another sign that uh, we are getting closer to Jesus' return. Yes. Yeah, in time's harvest, yet yeah. Coming to pass. So it's coming. Excellent. So we will look more into that with the pre-trib proofs on, in the book of Revelation coming up in mm-hmm. just a few minutes. So stay tuned. 800-721-9313. 1-800-721-9313. Hannah Kerr coming up next with Changed on your Celebration Radio Network. When you follow Jesus, you get changed. Yes. Forrest Frank and good day on your Celebration Radio Network. Almost five minutes to the top of the hour. The phone number again, 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. And in the studio with me is Pastor Ryan, John, and Terry. And uh, good morning again, gang. Good morning morning again. Good morning to you out there in, as they say, radio land. There you (laughs) go. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. We heard from Ike earlier and Mm -hmm. answered to prayer. He wanted to let us know that uh, um, when we prayed on Wednesday for him, that Mm -hmm. uh, the answer came. And and, uh, he appreciates your prayers. Awesome. Yeah. So, So, all right. Okay. Well, uh, shall we dive in? Do some in time. Let's dive in. Yes. (laughs) Yes. With Uh. (laughs) both both feet into the deep end. There you go. So, um, so we're, we're going to uh, start this morning. We're going to pivot into uh, kind of a new topic that that really it's a very very big topic, and it's mm-hmm. going to take us a lot of different places. And we're going to see a lot of a lot of things about the end time story. You know, digging deep into the Book of Revelation here. So th- this is going to be a fun one. Mm-hmm. So um, the kind of overarching uh, question, which I think will be exciting to to everybody listening, right? Yeah. Is um, you know how is the body of Christ depicted in the Book of Revelation? Mm-hmm. You know, where do we show up, et cetera, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, going to be a good time. So just just yeah. a li- little bit of a, you know what? Actually, before we get into like the uh, the context and the background of the the two verses that Terry's about to read, mm-hmm. why don't why don't you go ahead and read those, Terry, and then we'll explain where we're. Okay. At and where we're going. Okay, this is from Revelation 4, chapter uh, chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. 
And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must, must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so this is the Apostle John speaking, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, just, again, to give a little bit of context here, so, so this is the, the very beginning of Revelation chapter 4, right? Mm-hmm. right? So everything that came before this, uh, Revelation chapter 1, if you go look at it, mm-hmm. is, just, is just an introduction, okay? So, right. so John gets this amazing vision of, of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Jesus comes to speak with him, a lot of symbolism presented, you know. Right. And then uh, chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation are... Do you guys remember? Letters the seven the letters to the church. Yeah, the seven letters to the seven churches. So so there's a lot in there, mm-hmm. a lot to unpack. Yeah, but, there is. But, mm-hmm. you know, we're not going there this morning, of course. So yeah. so basically the point is this, is that the story doesn't actually start, the story of the book of Revelation, until what Terry just read. So, right. so Revelation chapter 4 is the beginning of the story. Very important point here, though, is that it's not the beginning of the story of the end times. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't start until chapter 5. Right. So chapter four is the beginning of the story in terms of um, where John goes. We're talking 2,000 years ago mm-hmm. when this happened mm-hmm. yeah. uh, to receive the prophecy, you know, what it looks like. So mm-hmm. so what, what do you guys see happening in these two verses here? Is um, a door opening and he's there yeah. in heaven. Right. Yeah. So, so John, he's on earth. He's on the Isle right. of Patmos, mm-hmm. right? And he hears a voice and he gets, he gets, he, he hears his voice that says, you know, come up here, mm-hmm. and then he finds himself in in heaven. And does he mean right. spiritually, physically? We we don't know. Don't know. It's yeah. like when Paul, when Paul. he got caught yeah. up to the Same third thing. heaven, yeah. whether it was spiritual, in spirit or in body, he mm-hmm. d- he didn't know, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so this is not unprecedented. Somebody getting right. called up to heaven in some yeah. form to receive a a word to receive yes. a vision, right? Mm-hmm. This is a big vision that John's about to about right. to receive. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you could say so, that. So yeah. now he's in the he's in the throne room of of God. So. So he, here's the thing: is that these two verses are are really um, utilized quite a bit in in times teaching, and in particular to to establish uh, the timing of the rapture. Okay, mm. so yes, we're going to get back into that topic a little bit. Oh boy! Okay. Oh. Yeah. Again, we're going to bounce around a lot. We're going to look, look at a right. lot of different things. Um, but uh, so so way back in 1999, um, Doctor Tim LaHaye wrote a book called Revelation yeah. Unveiled. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Bill, do you want to? Um, do you have that on, on your screen? It's the next slide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll have a, to get to that next. Uh, in, uh, okay. In, so, okay. Yeah. So, we'll, so when we come in, back, we're gonna few. we're gonna look at Dr. LaHaye's uh, commentary on the two verses that Terry just read, mm-hmm. and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Again, our number eight hundred seven two one nine three one three one eight hundred seven two one ninety three thirteen. I think you can, uh, get in a prayer request, a favorite song that you'd like to hear, or talk with Pastor Ryan, John, and Terry, and I. Again, that phone number, 800-721-9313. Oh, that was Cody Carnes and Take You at Your Word on your Celebration Radio Network at 14 minutes after the hour. This is Bill. The phone number again, 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313 to uh, get in that favorite prayer request or yeah. um, talk to John, Terry, Pastor Ryan, yeah. and I. Yeah. Yep, here we hey, are. So hey, yes, I do want to here. say something really quick, and yes. I'm going to talk really fast because I do talk fast because I'm on radio. Hey, <laughs> yes. um, one of the things is uh, we, talk, we talk about the end times here a mm-hmm. lot. Um, of course, that's our main goal. <laughs> yep. um, so we talk about the different uh, views and perspectives of, you know, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pan-trib, whatever you want to call it, of, you know, when the rapture is going to happen, when Jesus comes back. And we discuss a lot of that and go into a lot of different things. A lot of people call this the non-essentials because this doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. So uh, turning your life over to Christ and surrendering to him and following him is still the number one thing we all need to do. Yes. Right? It, it is, so. yeah. So I, and, I, and I love what you just said. Yes. Um, I, can I add a little something to that? Just yes, a little, I little wanted to too, but I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, go, go ahead. You were going to add something else? Oh, I was just going to say that, um, you know, we say it's a non-essential, but that has to do with salvation. As far as the end times go and what's going to happen, you need to have your eyes open and you need to know what's actually going to happen because there is going to be the great apostasy, the great falling away. Which is caused by great deception. It's great deception. And so you need to be strong in the word of God and know what Jesus said, Matthew 24 in particular, and exactly what John is saying in his prophecy and how all that goes back and reflects on the Old Testament, New Testament, and everything that's been said and how it all pans out because you need to understand that. Yeah. Because if you don't, you could be great of the 
part of the great falling away. And and he, so, here's the thing. So so Paul and second, yeah, what you're referring to here, yeah. uh, Paul and Second Thessalonians chapter two verses mm-hmm. one through four. Right. And by the way, this was this was literally like the whole discussion yesterday on the Africa TikTok that we did. Mm-hmm. So okay. everybody listening, go to um, thesefinaldays.org, mm-hmm. and then you could link over to to our YouTube channel, which yeah. is youtube.com forward slash these final days. Right. And look for the 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 uh, TFD in Africa TikTok uh, playlist. Mm-hmm. And the one that I just posted yesterday mm-hmm. of Pastor Jay and, and myself, and that this is what we're talking about, right? So, mm-hmm. so in those four verses, Second Thessalonians two verse one through four, the Apostle Paul actually goes into detail about yes. what, what John just uh, said, right? Mm-hmm. So during, so right now today, this morning, mm-hmm. it's, it's not, of course, it's not a salvation issue. You know, you yeah. can, you can, you know, I mean, we all have different, you know, be- beliefs, and there's, I should say it like this. We, mm. There are a lot of different views out there, a lot of different teachings about the, mm. the time of the rapture. Yeah. And here's a question. Does the body of Christ uh, remain on earth for the seven-year Great Tribulation and the three-and-a-half-year reign of the Antichrist? Mm. None of us want the answer to be yes, okay? Yeah. But Paul specifically says in those four verses mm-hmm. that, that, um, that, that what we believe about the timing of the rapture, mm-hmm. okay, in relation to the reign of the Antichrist— actually yes. is specifically what he means by the the great end times deception yeah. he used the word deception there over and over if you look at all 12 verses yes. right right uh and then he says if you're deceived about this one point mm-hmm. the time of the rapture this, how do we get into this already my gosh yes. <laughs> about this one point then you are susceptible to what is called the great falling away the greek right. word is apostasia mm-hmm. it means apostasy it means falling away from the face so so it's mm-hmm. it's it's an important topic that we're getting Very, into here, boy, yeah. John. Mm-hmm. I was not going to go there yet, okay. but, but I, no, <laughs> that's cool though. Let's let's you know, yes. let's, let's get the party started. I needed right? to get that header in there. It's, <laughs> so so you know, so so it's a it's a touchy topic. It's it, but everybody, you know, we're all believers in in Christ. We're brothers mm-hmm. and sisters. We love each other. We walk in love. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Let's just look at the word together. Let's just, that's it. just see what it says. We're doing a Bible study here, right? Exactly. So, that's it. Yeah. So uh, way back in 1999, it's been a long time now, 25 mm-hmm. years now, right? Yeah. Dr. Tim wow. Hay. Yeah. And if I'm you're, old. If, yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're Gen Z, you've never heard this then. guy, right? <laughs> um, and, I, and I keep going back to this reference, and I'm thinking, gosh, now I'm like dating myself by always <laughs> pointing to this book from 1999. But it's because Dr. LaHaye really wrote what, what we could almost call like the Bible of the, the, yeah. this idea of the pre-tribulation yeah. rapture, okay? Uh, meaning, you know, pretty much every teaching you hear on it today is based on this one book. It's and this, almost like the quintessential pre-rapture book. It yeah, it really, yeah, it really is. Go. It, it really is. is. He's, and, he, yeah. he really codified the whole um, idea, the whole theory of the pre-tribulation rapture. So that's what we go about this. It also keeps us out of the, the minefield of bringing up current popular teachers and mm. writers, which we don't want to yeah. get too, we don't want to be controversial here. Right? Not no. at all. We're, we're not here for that. So, so uh, Bill, do we even have time in this segment now to read? No. Well, <laughs> okay. okay. Sorry. No, so, that's okay. No, that was, that was <laughs> excellent. Laying that, the boy, foundation is go. so important. So ho- hopefully we're getting yeah. people excited about this topic. Yeah. And when we here. come back, we'll get into the, the rapture before tribulation passage in mm-hmm. that book by uh, Tim LaHaye. So mm-hmm. Matthew West with Don't Stop Praying is coming up next on your Celebration Radio Network. Our number again, 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. Well, we are 25 minutes to the top of the hour on your Celebration Radio Network. Again, this is Bill, the phone number 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. In the studio with me is Pastor Ryan, John, and Terry for just a few more minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's 20, 25 minutes or again. so. You, yeah. you guys hang out usually till about 8 o'clock. So yeah. um, we were discussing Tim LaHaye's book, um, Book of Revelation. It's, 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 uh, called, it's called Revelation Unveiled. Yeah, Revelation Unveiled. Unveiled. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this uh, uh, book, it says this after the Revelation 4, 1 and 2, which Terry shared with us a little bit ago. It says, it was no coincidence that the first thing to happen after John has described the seven churches, which we have seen represent not only a message to each individual church, but also to the seven periods of church history, is his being taken up into heaven, inasmuch as John was the last remaining apostle and a member of the universal church. His elevation to heaven is a picture of the rapture of the church just before the tribulation begins. Okay. So, end quote. <clears throat> so, yeah. r- really big statement by, 
by Dr. LaHaye. So what, what, uh, what Tim LaHaye is saying here is that, you know, John being called up to heaven in Revelation chapter four, verses one and two, that, uh, this is, this is right before he receives a vision. So this would be, you know, in the, in the chronology of the book of Revelation, this is before the great tribulation, before the reign of the Antichrist. And this is, this is actually a, a little, little like clue to us. It's like a symbol of the church being raptured to, to heaven before mm-hmm. all that stuff starts. And, you know, I- interesting on the surface, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's the claim that this has become again, what, one of the top 10 arguments in favor of, of this idea of a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, any teacher that teaches, uh, that, that, you know, idea, uh, they're going to, they're going to point yeah. to this as, as part of their, you know, their arsenal, right. To, right. to prove that point. Yeah. So what do you guys think? I mean, does that what it, is that what it feels like to you? Nope. Like this is a archetype of the rapture? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> no, not no, at all. No, because if, if it was, then Paul, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, is also the same thing. Because what happened in yeah, that story? Yeah, because Paul even says that. I don't know where I was. I don't know if I was caught up to the third heaven. I don't know where I was at. I don't know what actually happened, but I did meet Jesus. Yeah, he, he, so, says, he says someone... So then would... we should all be raptured already, because that happened <laughs> way back when Paul met Jesus. So, yeah, so he, he, that, that argument doesn't hold anywhere in here it, it, yeah it's, it's like i said earlier it's it, it's it's like sugetically reading into the scripture what you want it to say and mm-hmm. you can't say that you gotta let the scripture talk to you yeah it's that's exegetical you, you gotta let, let the scripture say what it's trying to say are we allowed to use these big words on radio sorry I suge- no no it's good yeah so what what so, is yeah. eisegesis and exegesis okay so eisegetic or eisegesis is actually reading in to the scripture what you believe the scripture says or what you want it to say want it to say yeah. yeah so you're reading into it um exegetical is you're actually letting the scripture tell you what it's saying. You're not reading into it. You're not putting any of your stuff in. You actually know the history content, what's going on in that story, what's happening in the Bible, and you're letting it speak right. to you for what it actually was intended to say. And, you know, of course, every teacher like us we're teaching yeah. here, right, is going to claim, well, I don't do the eisegesis thing. I do the exegesis thing. Mm-hmm. I just read. And um, so, you know, it's up to the audience to decide. Again, we're mm. going to get into a bunch of scripture, and, and then everybody can decide right. for themselves what they think they're seeing there. Mm-hmm. One, one thing I, I like about um, uh, what, what uh, Tim LaHaye mm-hmm. presents here is that I, I think that at the very least he's implying something that I firmly agree with, which is that the book of Revelation is in chronological order. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah. It's at least acknowledging that idea. Right. Okay. So a lot of teachers teach that it's not, that it's just this big chaotic, confusing Oh, no. mess yeah. of you know no, all these no. different events and they're out of order and all that and God's not the author of chaos no. right so he, you know he's not the, you know his final parting written word to mankind the book of Revelation is not going to be a big jumbled mess that that it would be useless to us mm-hmm. we'd never right. so the book of Revelation is a hundred percent in chronological order so so uh, so one tricky thing though about uh, Doctor LaHaye putting the rapture in Revelation chapter four verse one is um, first of all, Revelation chapter four, again, as I said earlier, is not part of the chronology of the end times. The mm-hmm. entire chapter, chapter four, is just John uh, being uh, up in heaven, right. you know, taken mm-hmm. up to heaven to receive this whole mm-hmm. prophecy, right? Way more to the point is that uh, Revelation chapters five, six, and seven mm-hmm. Describe the prelude to the Great Tribulation, which mm-hmm. incidentally takes place over a period of about 250 years or mm-hmm. more, yeah. mm-hmm. between 250 and 300 years. Mm-hmm. Talk about that later, but yeah. but the point is that the 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 actual Great Tribulation doesn't even start until Revelation chapter eight, mm-hmm. which means that if if John being taken up to heaven in Revelation chapter four is symbolic of the timing of the Rapture, that means that the Rapture should have happened back in the middle of the 1700s. Yeah. That's a fact, okay, yes, based on, is, based yeah. on um, you know, again, <clears throat> that all the stuff that Revelation describes from there as the mm-hmm. prelude to the Great Tribulation. So, yeah. so, uh, so, so at first glance, it just, you know, kind of doesn't fit. A um, right. couple of other small points, then we, we need to go to music. So can I, do I have like 30 seconds? <laughs> so, so also, um, if, if, if that's true, that the location mm-hmm. of John during this, this vision, during the book of Revelation is indicative of the location of the church, Revelation chapter 13, it says, John says, then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So 
Does that mean that halfway through the Great Tribulation, the whole mm. church is back on a beach somewhere? I'm sorry, yeah. the, uh, it's kind yeah. of a small point. I mean, I'm being nitpicky here, just making a point. No. Revelation chapter 17, kind of like toward the end of the Great Tribulation, John says, uh, so he, he, this angel, carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Again, it's on earth. Mm-hmm. So is the whole body of Christ. Gonna, you know, it just, yeah, it, doesn't. It, just, it, it, just, it just isn't fitting like really, really well. But there's a much bigger point that Dr. LaHaye is making here that we're going to have a lot of fun with. It's going to take a few shows. Yeah. Everybody get ready. Yep. But, uh, but we'll describe what that is when we come back after the break. Okay. <laughs> 1-800-721-9313. Elevation Worship coming up next. And praise on your Celebration Radio Network. Good Friday morning. Yes, let it begin. That is Big Daddy Weave on your Celebration Radio Network. We're almost to 10 minutes to the top of the hour, which I can't believe it's already. (laughs) I know, man. Time flies. Yeah, it does. And you're having fun, and we are having fun, right? Oh, yes. yes. Pastor Ryan, John, and Terry are in the (laughs) studio with me this morning, and the phone number 800-721-9313, So, um, all right, so so the last segment we talked Mm -hmm. about, you know, this idea that Dr. LaHaye presented. Right. That that John in chap, uh, chapter four verse Revelation that I'm sorry chapter chapter four of the book of Revelation verses one and two that that's a a, a type and shadow that's an arch it's symbolic of the rapture taking place before mm-hmm. the tribulation uh, it, but but there's there's a crux to this argument mm-hmm. that that he's making okay there's a there's a deeper point here so mm-hmm. um, I I forgot to say this during our break just now or um, can somebody scroll ahead to slide number ninety five you'll see a mm-hmm. picture of the the book, book yes. again Revelation yep. unveiled. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. whoever gets there okay. first. So um, is this the absence of any mention of the church? Uh, look, so is John's got it. Okay, yep. so the it. absence. <laughs> so this is from Tim LaHaye, Revelation Unveiled. He says, the absence of any mention of the church in the rest of Revelation indicates that it is not on earth during the tribulation. Okay, listen, again, mm. huge argument that to this day is being made daily yes. around the world, different teachers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so, and we're not going to name names here, but, but, mm-hmm. but a lot of our, you know, favorite, you know, teachers out there, preachers, mm-hmm. you know, very, very large churches and ministries, yes. uh, who teach this topic, the time of the rapture, and they believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Mm-hmm. This is by far one of their favorite points to make is look mm-hmm. after, after John gets called up to heaven in revelation chapter four, the church is never, you know, mentioned again throughout mm-hmm. the whole rest of the book of revelation right. when the tribulation is described, when the reign of the antichrist is described. So Clearly, I mean, it's obvious we're not mentioned because we're not here during that time. Mm. Okay, yep. somebody, somebody want to like get started on this <clears throat> point? And I know we can't like get into sure. it. This show, we but let's, yeah, we don't have a lot of time. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's just let's just put the word out there. The word <laughs> is the elect, right? That's what we're looking at. So the church is mentioned throughout the rest of Revelation. They just call him. He always calls them the elect, the people who follow Christ. So, so, so here's the thing. <clears throat> so, so the word church. So this this is the okay. argument is that. You don't see this term, the church, or the word church, anywhere else throughout the rest of the book of Revelation, which mm-hmm. isn't quite true. The word shows up again in, at the very end, chapters 21, oh, yeah, 22. That's right. Did you say that But again? basically, you know, yeah. where the book of Revelation describes the tribulation and the reign of the Antichrist, you don't see the, the word church at mm-hmm. all. So let me just ask the three of yeah. you, is there any other word saints, or term? Saints. saints servants. It's servants. Servants. servants elects, um, yeah, the elect. The, those who follow so, Christ, those yes. who have the witness of Christ, those who have the blood of the Lamb. So, so there's a lot of different ways mm-hmm. that, that the church, the body of Christ, can be referred to other than just the word church. Right. And in fact, if you do a word study in, in the book of Revelation, just look for that, that word church, it shows up 11 times in the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And can I tell you something? In every single case, it's never talking about the church anyways. Okay. Mm-hmm. The word church in the book of Revelation never is referring to the body of Christ. Okay. It's referring to the seven individual churches. Mm-hmm. We said earlier, Revelation right. chapters two and three, the seven letters. Every time you see the church in in the book of Revelation, so so you know, to the church in Philadelphia, write this. To yes. the church in Ephesus, write this. To the church in Laodicea, and this is God. This is God's message to the churches, meaning those seven churches. Right. So um, the point is that the church never means Christians in general, mm-hmm. right? In right. in the book of Revelation, um, but yeah. So again, so this is. This is the argument. It, it, it's a huge one. It, mm-hmm. Everybody hears on there. Like, oh yeah, that proves it, right? right. So what we want to do going forward for the next, you know, few shows. I mean, knowing us, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be fun though, because yeah. we're gonna go. 
to a lot of different places in the book of Revelation and, and throughout the Word of God. So mm-hmm. there's a lot to learn here, not mm-hmm. just this specific, you know, right. question. But but um, in future shows, you know, coming up the next, you know, like we're going to do one mm-hmm. in two weeks, I think, uh, we'll, we're going to start looking at uh, the book of Revelation beyond chapter four. Mm-hmm. And it, with this question in mind, is the body of Christ depicted in the book of Revelation? And specifically, is it depicted on earth during the, the seven year Great Tribulation and the three and a half year reign right. of the Antichrist? And everybody can probably guess what our answer is already. Yeah. But, we're, but yeah. you know, it's up to the audience. to do, Everybody, we have to decide for ourselves. Be filled with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. continually. Yes. Get yes, in the Word amen. of God yourself. And mm-hmm. iron sharpens iron. And let's just, let's just have fun with the Word. That's it. You know, this, this is going to be a good one. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Lots of fun. one 800 721 I want to thank you guys for being here today. Oh, was that, our last, was that our last segment? Yes. Was that, oh, I guess I just yeah. signed us off, didn't I? Oh. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, you did. All right. Can I say like we always do? So yes, we want to We want to yeah. really thank uh, Farron and Miss Debbie for uh, letting mm-hmm. us do this show every yes. couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, um, you can find out more about this, th- this particular ministry, These Final Days, at thesefinaldays.org. Mm-hmm. But we want to encourage everybody, please support your Celebration right. Radio Network. That's the radio st- the, uh, the station that you're listening to mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So, Bill, how can they do that? Well, they can go to sharethelightnow.org and uh, give online, or they can mail it in to P.O. Box 747, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, 86405. You can also call 800-721-9313. 800-721-9313 and give us uh, your information over the phone. Or you, you can uh, stop by the studios at 510 North Tacoma Boulevard and drop it off in person. We'd love to meet you. Yeah. Give you a tour of the studios and yeah. and uh, and all of the gang as well. Yeah, so, mm. these guys are great. There might even be some coffee here. Yeah, them, be. So. yeah. Well, there usually is. There's <laughs> it usually the is. Kitchen right Maybe now. some good yeah. Zambian coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, again, thank you guys for being here. Love you all. And you uh, we'll see you in a love couple of weeks. It. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. God bless. Terry N with Honestly, We Just Need Jesus is coming up next on your Celebration Radio Network. Well, we're at 11 minutes after the hour on your Celebration Radio Network. Mercy Me with Always Only Jesus is coming up next. Prayer in just a few minutes. If you have that prayer request, 800-721-9313. Yes, Jordan Saints here and Tiffany Hudson with Rescue on your Celebration Radio Network. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Well, Jeremiah, again, 17, 7, the version Bible app verse of the day. And I want to thank you for allowing us to be part of your Friday morning. And Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for allowing us and the privilege that we have as well to begin each day with you. So as today continues to unfold, Give us your wisdom to handle any situation we encounter. Let, your spe- uh, let our speech be seasoned with your grace and our thoughts pleasing to you. And we're so grateful to know that regardless of where this day does take us, you are right there in the midst, and there's no shortage of good things in your presence. So, Lord, that presence I pray the listeners feel throughout their day. And let us remember to have a mindset on things above, to be heavenly and kingdomly minded, so that your light shines through our lives into this dark world, and that the precious name of Jesus will be glorified. And in that name of Jesus we pray, amen.